Am I the asshole for being a little uncomfortable contributing a lot of money for my brother's baby shower? So quick facts. I, 30 female, have a brother, 33 male. He and his husband, 34 male, are in the process of adopting two babies from two different women. My brother makes about 95K. His husband makes about 80K. Both are teachers in high paying districts. I'm a single person and I make about 60K, also a teacher. And I just bought a house last year. I don't get paid over the summer and I'm in two weddings coming up that also take a lot of money. My brother and his husband are understandably very excited and they wanna have a baby shower to help get stuff for possibly two babies. One baby is due September 26th, the other is due October 15th. Here's where things get a bit dicey. They, mostly my brother, want to have a big fancy baby shower with possibly a hundred guests or more. Wow. He said it'll be like a mini wedding and even got into a fight with his mother-in-law about the cost of a venue and expecting them to shell out the money for it. She called him spoiled and he got very offended. You're offended that someone doesn't want to spend a whole lot of money on a venue for a baby shower that you've decided that you want for the two babies that you are adopting. I always thought if someone wants to throw you a baby shower, it's simply because they want to. And even then, if they offer to pay for everything out of pocket, okay. But a lot of women I know pay for their own baby showers. A lot of people, I shouldn't just say women, a lot of people that I know throw their own baby showers. So you're expecting all of this high venue, high price venue and shit, but you're not gonna pay for it? It's given spoiled, sir. It's, it's definitely giving spoiled. Of course, I wanna help out as much as I can, and I offered to make the invitations and help organize stuff. But as I talk with my brother, I realize just how much he's expecting me and his sister-in-law, 31 female, to contribute since all the parents and themselves are paying over 6,500 for the venue, food, and drinks. Uh, 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 uh. How much is he expecting you? 6,000 is what he's expecting you to give? Because that's a lot. For a baby shower? A baby shower. People's weddings don't cost $6,500. Uh, mm. Sir, baby girl, you not the asshole because I wouldn't be paying this shit either. I'll bring you a case of Pampers and a case of wipes and a gift card to whatever baby clothes store you want to go to. But $6,500. <laughs> I'm not going to eat $6,500 worth of food. I'm not going to eat $6,500, drink $6,500 worth of alcohol. So, no, and I can't take up $6,500 worth of space, so I'm not paying for it. Mm -mm -mm, girl, no, no. From what I understand, he mentioned we would cover decorations, centerpieces, favors, setting up, doing the seating chart, which is all reasonable. But then he started to mention many bottles of champagne for each person. <laughs> a photo booth and other extras like that on top of expecting a gift. I was told I could get another crib or a bassinet since sister-in-law is getting one for about $350. When I said all of that is a lot of money, he said, just be glad I'm not asking you to contribute to paying for the venue like I was going to originally do. The entitlement, sir. I was going to say, well, he's spicy, but fucking clearly this man's sassy as fuck. Sir, no, you got you got all the motherfucking nerve and audacity. When I tell you this sounds pretty expensive, a bit expensive for me. Well, just be glad I'm not asking you to spend more money like I was going to. <laughs> OK, so what you telling me is you don't want me to come. That's fine, because I'll keep my money because what the fuck? I, where do y'all find these people? Of course, I want to spoil my nieces and help out as much as I can. And maybe it's that they just expect me to put out all this money without even asking me. I've also always been the money conscious one, and I've even helped bail my brother out of credit card debt a few years ago. Just 3000 and he did eventually pay me back. So am I the asshole? Also, how much do siblings generally contribute towards a baby shower? However fucking much you want. That's how much you contribute. I've already said it, but I'll say it again. No, you're not the asshole. You're not the asshole. I am not going to put myself in debt because you want everyone around you to pay for the most expensive items that you need for two children that you are choosing to adopt. Instead of spending all this fucking money on this big ass venue, how about, hear me out, how about we spend the money getting the cribs and shit that we fucking need? That's just an idea.
that is just an idea. Your brother's mother-in-law was 100% correct. He is spoiled and fucking entitled because how the hell you gonna get mad at somebody for not wanting to pay for a venue that you want? If you want it so fucking bad, you need to pay for it. This is something that you guys are choosing to do. You're already fucking married. Nobody has to pay for a fucking venue for a baby shower. What happened to go into the goddamn park? Remember when people used to go to the park for baby showers? What the fuck happened to that? What the fuck? You pay like $10 an hour or $10, $2 an hour out here to go to the fucking park. What happened to that? Your brother is using the fact that they are adopting babies to throw himself a big fancy party. That's what it is. He is using this as an excuse to get attention because he is an attention seeker. Because if they really needed help getting all these fucking items, you could literally ask your family. If you could ask your in-laws for $6,500 to put down on a goddamn venue, then you can ask them to buy a crib since the crib only costs $350. Like, it's just an excuse for him to throw a fucking party. Girl, you need to talk to your brother and let him know I am not comfortable with you guys automatically assuming that I'm going to spend X amount of money on your on your baby shower. I'm sorry, but these are the ways that I'm willing to help you. If you want to accept it, I would love to be a part of your day. If not, I completely understand. But what you're not going to do is spend my money and then tell me that I should be grateful that you're not trying to spend more of it. Hell no, nah, girl. You need to let them know or they're going to continue to do this because it's not going to stop after the babies get here. It's not. I can smell if it's either you or my wife. You got enough wine in you with my back turned oh, shoulder, little shoulder. You might not catch it. Yeah, but you know the hairs and shit. I, I would, I, I would oh. kind of, I would kind of see it. You know, but I would... it's dark in there. I accidentally got into bed with my father-in-law. Hot. My father-in-law is staying with us for a few days. We gave him our room while he's here. It's bigger, and we just felt it's the right thing to do. Last night, he went to bed, and my wife and I were downstairs watching TV and drinking. She went up a while later, too, and I said I'd be up soon. I was getting pretty tipsy at this point. As I went upstairs, sleepiness and my tipsy state meant I forgot that my father-in-law was in our room. I entered the room and got naked, which is how I sleep. I saw a figure curled up in bed and got next to it, wrapping my arms around what I thought was my wife to see if she was up for sex. He's a light sleeper and turned around immediately saying, quote, Chris, oh my fucking God. I jumped out and fell to the floor. It was dark. And for some reason, I decided to get dressed there rather than just run to the guest room where my wife was. I stumbled over my clothes and somehow got them back on. By the time he got the table lamp on and was just looking at me with a what the fuck expression. I said sorry and went to my wife. I didn't wake her up. I just got up this morning and I'm typing this in bed with a massive hangover and a father-in-law who I tried to spoon, probably talking shit about me to my wife downstairs. I have to go downstairs at some point and any idea what to do or how to address it? I feel like you gotta play it off and just be like, hey John, really sorry about last night. I guess this is why we shouldn't give you our room. Guest bedroom next time, buddy. Mm. I, and I think it all depends on the person too. I feel like if that happened to me, mm. we would have laughed about it, haha, ha, and then that's it. Am I the asshole for calling the police on my sister after she snuck shellfish in my food knowing that I'm allergic? Me and my sister have never had any issues until last week when her and her husband invited me over for dinner, which is normal for us. I have a severe shellfish allergy and it makes me extremely itchy. My sister is aware of this and she's known this since we were children. When I got to her house, she said that the food was already finished and it was in the fridge and she said that it was just a tuna pasta. And before you say anything, yes, I can eat tuna and many other fish, just nothing with a shell. After my sister finished cleaning up, we had a short conversation about what's been happening in our lives because it has been a while since we'd seen each other. I got this really strange feeling from her, but I just brushed it off because I was super tired that day, so I didn't know if it was just me feeling that way. She grabbed the food out of the fridge and gave it to me, and she gave me a small bowl in case I didn't like it, is what she said. I couldn't smell much of it, but from what I could smell, I just assumed it was fish. Like she said, I thought that it was tuna. But when I took a bite of it, I almost immediately noticed my throat was literally on fire burning. Am I the asshole for calling the police on my sister after she snuck shellfish in my food knowing that I'm allergic? I took a bite of it, I almost immediately noticed my throat was literally on fire burning. I was coughing and grabbing at my throat and her husband kept asking me if I was choking. 
And that's when my sister turned to me and she was panicking and she was like, I thought that you were exaggerating. An ambulance was called and I was rushed to the hospital and thankfully I was okay, but they did make me stay for about two days to be monitored. My sister and brother-in-law tried to come visit me, but I just yelled at her to get the F out. She kept apologizing and refused to leave and I told her that I would be calling the police on her for what she'd done because it's literally attempted murder and she absolutely lost her shit. She kept screaming at me saying, I know you're faking this. You always pretend like you're allergic to shellfish, so I just wanted to test you. And that's when the nurse came in because they heard her screaming and asked if I wanted them removed and I said yes. I explained the whole situation to her and I eventually decided that with the help of the nurse and security, I would file a report against her. My mother is saying that I'm overreacting and saying that I should have just cut contact, but I don't know anymore. So am I the asshole? I told her that's chubby. You're chubby. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend she's not curvy, she's chubby? Oh, oh my god, buddy, you're running on a thin line right now and that line snapped for sure. I'm already calling you an asshole for this, but let's let's let me hear you out. So my girlfriend, 23 female, and me, 26 male, have been together since 2019. She used to weigh about 125 pounds at 5'8". She was pretty thin. The past 13 months, she gained 25 pounds and now weighs 150 pounds. She continuously calls herself curvy and that's just not true. Her boobs did not grow with the weight gain and she is still a 34A cup. Her thighs and butt area did grow a bit, but she is still not an hourglass. You're an asshole. Holy shit. I don't like what? Stop. I wouldn't be bothered by this if she didn't heavily identify with it. When she was 125 pounds, she kept identifying with how thin she was. At 125 pounds, she was proud that she couldn't see anything on her CT scan when she had an appendicitis because she was too skinny. She wants to make a TikTok fashion page dedicated to curvy fashion. I got annoyed with her identifying so much with a body type that isn't even hers that I said, you're not curvy, you're chubby. She looked at me stunned. I told her curvy was like Beyonce, for example. Example. She said that she felt that she was curvy because she's not skinny anymore and not fat. I told her that's chubby. You're chubby. And she began to cry and left my apartment. Ah, ah, oh my god, wow, that's so mean! It's been 12 hours and we haven't talked since. I know this was mean, but it was true. I was so frustrated with the idea of her making this fashion TikTok account for a body type that's not hers. See, let's get to the root of it. Why does that bother you? It's like her own personal TikTok. Like, why do you care? Why does that bother you? It's her life. It's her body. It's her TikTok. Like, why does that? It does have nothing. It doesn't affect your life at all. Also, she hasn't had an eating disorder or anything. I think she just naturally gained weight as she got older. Am I the asshole for stating a fact? Story of the time these creepy old men would not leave me and my friend alone at the club. So I went to this club with my friend and this particular night, there wasn't that many people there. But you already know, even though the club wasn't popping, doesn't mean that we weren't. <laughs> so we obviously looked super cute, you know, had to pop out. And the second we got there, a bunch of guys were trying to buy us drinks. And like, I don't know about y'all, but <laughs> definitely not turning down a free drink. I mean, unless it's like handed to me by some creepy stranger, not actually at the bar, then like, yeah, no, definitely don't ever do that. <laughs> But given to me straight by the bartender, of course, I'll take that free drink. Absolutely. So these two old men start talking to me and my friend, and they start getting us drinks. And being the professional finessers that we are, we dipped straight to the dance floor after we got our drinks. So we're just vibing, having a great time, dancing some bachata, even though we don't know how. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I feel somebody grab the back of my neck. And it was one of the creepy old men trying to talk to me. So I pulled away because like, don't touch me. What are you doing? And then he tries to wiggle his way in between me and my friend and tries to dance with me. I was like, what are you doing? So I pull my friend away, try to run away. And he was like, what? You're not going to dance with me after I bought you all these drinks? And I was like, I'm sorry. Did you pay off my school loan? Like, I don't think I owe you anything, sir. And then this security guard gets involved. My brother writes notes to me and my little sister, pretending to be our mom, and he doesn't know we know. My dad isn't in the picture, and my mom works long hours every day, so she's usually gone by 7 and comes back around 8. She's still a great mom, though, and I love her very much. One day, I, 15 female, found a note in my bag, the day of a major exam, from my, quote, mom, telling me not to give up and that she's proud of me no matter what. It really made me happy, but the handwriting was a bit wonky. I didn't think much of it. A while later, I kept 
watch my brother, 20 male, packing something into my bag at night. I play it off and pretend I don't think much about it. The next day, I find another note in my bag. Then I realized my little sister, seven female, had been getting notes too from mom every day because I was helping her pack her bag in the morning one time. She told me that, quote, I know it's from brother, but I still like them. <laughs> my brother always puts on this bad boy front for everyone. Like, quote, I don't care about anything and I wear leather jackets. So it's super sweet and kind of funny to think about him writing in wonky cursive and drawing heart shapes at night. What do the hey. leather jackets have to do with it? <laughs> Just that bad boy persona. He has no idea we know and I don't plan on telling him. I don't really use Reddit, but I just think it's really sweet and I got another note this morning. There is an update. Update is just titled, my brother writes notes to me, my little sister, pretend to be we our mom and he doesn't know we know. I don't know if I'm doing this right, so sorry I'm if I get the formatting excited. wrong or anything. The original post on my profile. I'd like to thank all of you who left kind words for my brother and for all the awards and upvotes. So this isn't the most exciting of updates, but this post got kind of viral and my brother actually saw it on TikTok. Yeah, it was an awkward conversation to have, but he said you guys are all really wholesome and he thanks you for your compliments. As for his reaction, I don't know if he's going to see this, but he shrugged it off like it was no big deal. But I can tell he was secretly really pleased. <laughs> By the way, to some of you who asked if my mom knew, I actually didn't ask her, but she told me when it came up the other day that my sister already showed her his notes. She thinks it's really cute too. He doesn't do the mom thing anymore, but I think he figured we still liked getting notes from him, so he still leaves them. Aww. Just not signed off by mom. Yeah. He writes in his normal handwriting, and the notes aren't as cheesy, but they're still really sweet. Aww. Sorry if you were expecting a wedding post or something. A wedding post? I don't know what they mean, but that's adorable. Like That is adorable. An older brother just like taking care of his little siblings, making yeah. sure they have sweet notes to send them on their day, and like kind of like, like looking out for mom, too. Like, mom is busy working. Mom has it so hard. Single mom to three kids. What a selfless little cutie. Yeah. I love that. I know, I do too. One of the top comments on the original, man, if he ever gets married, you have got to give a speech and tell this story, which is probably uh, what the wedding yeah. thing was about. And they go, yep, he already has a girlfriend who is amazing, by the way, and I'm pretty sure they're going to tie the knot because I've dated for so long. This is definitely going to be on my list of things to say in my speech if yep. I make one. Um, And just top comments on the update. He sounds ridiculously adorable. So cute. Am I the asshole for upsetting my boyfriend's sister? My boyfriend has a sister, Shayna, who can't handle any bad news or people saying no because she has a learning disability. So Shayna gets everything that she wants. I have two other friends whose birthday is close to mine and we're doing a yacht with the DJ. We all work in hospitality, so we were able to snag a good deal for a weekday party. I told his mother of the birthday plans after she asked, and she told me that Shayna would have so much fun she went off to tell Shayna. Shayna was not invited. I don't want to have to worry about her at my party. I don't want to babysit. I don't want my boyfriend to babysit. I want to have fun. I told my boyfriend to set this straight now. He said that he would sort this out later on. But I played this game before with him. And Shayna ended up coming anyway because of his mom and her guilt tripping him. Hell nah. Nope. You are entitled to want to enjoy your day on your birthday. And if they want Shayna to come so bad, she needs to have a babysitter that is right there with her for the sole purpose to keep her safe, occupied and happy at this party. I got mad and I told him loud enough for both his mom and Shayna to hear, saying that Shayna isn't coming and neither can you if you can't grow some balls. Shayna started crying and his mom yelled at me for upsetting her daughter. Man, that's your fault for not asking if your daughter can come to this party because you don't know if it's exclusive. You don't know if it's only going to be seven people there. You don't know what the fuck is going to happen. It's your fault for assuming that your daughter was going to be able to go and that people were going to want to stand around and babysit her all day. That's your bad. You upset your daughter. You already know how this works. You should have asked if it was okay for her to come. I told them fuck this and that this isn't gonna be my life. And I walked out of his mom's house and I ordered an Uber home. Last I heard, I upset Shayna so much she had to go to the hospital with a panic attack. And obviously we're no longer together. My mom said I should have been nicer to his sister since she has a disability, but I feel like he should have stepped up right then. Am I the asshole? I don't think you're the asshole because I would have said the same thing loud enough for his mama and his sister to hear she's not invited. Either you go and fucking tell her or they gonna hear me yelling at you right now because we've already gone through this. 
we have already gone through this. You said you played this game with him before and she ends up coming along any fucking way because he allows his mom to guilt trip you. This isn't the first time. This was the last time. You were fed the fuck up and you weren't going to allow it to happen anymore. You're 100% entitled to want to enjoy your birthday. Your birthday. Their mom fucked around and found out. You're not just going to always be able to push your daughter onto us and expect me to be okay with it. My friend slept with my engaged sister. No one knows but me. For a little context, I am 21 years old and my friend is 20 years old. My sister is 32 years old. My sister and my friend slept together a month ago and they've been sleeping together ever since. I found this all out yesterday when my sister wanted me to clear out messages on her iPad, which is connected to her phone, so that she could have storage on her phone. I saw some messages from my friend and I wanted to see what they were talking about because I didn't even know that they had each other's numbers to be honest. By the way, I know that this was an invasion of privacy. I don't need people screaming in the comments about it. When I went through the messages, I was very surprised because it was extremely sexual and it dated back to a month ago. At that point, I just knew they had slept together because the messages on there were insinuating it 100%. From what I could tell, the way that the messages looked, it seems like they didn't start talking until after they slept together. My sister sent the first message to my friend. It definitely looked like she was flirting more. I'm not really sure who initiated sleeping together first. I'm not trying to put all the blame on my sister, but she is the one who is in a relationship and literally about to get married. Obviously, I'm a little bit hurt and feel betrayed by the both of them. I'm planning on telling her fiance, but I do want to talk to them about it first and kind of get their side of the story. I'm just completely at a loss here and so confused on what to do and where to go from here. My boyfriend, 23 male, and I, 23 female, have been together nearly five years. We have been really good friends for about three years before we started dating, and I always liked his parents. Things were great when we first started dating, but within the past year, his mom has taken a turn. He's always been a bit of a mama's boy, but she's really ramped it up in the last year. This year, on a bunch of my special days, birthdays, our anniversary, my graduation party, she calls him and tells him big family news. On my birthday, she told him that she found a lump in her breast three months prior and left it at that. Hours later, she called back after he was understandably upset the rest of the day and said, quote, oh yeah, it ended up being nothing, but I figured I should tell you. Also happened at my graduation party. She told him that a family member had been in a car crash three weeks prior and now is not doing well. One phone call with bad timing is understandable, but it happens pretty frequently. Also, they talk every day, so there's no reason why she wouldn't have told him prior. <laughs> Most recently, we were at his grandparents' anniversary party, and he and I were dancing to Perfect by Ed Sheeran. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> About 30 seconds into the song, she came over and pushed me out of the way and said, quote, let me dance with my son. I walked away and he just let it happen, which was probably for the best as to not cause drama. I was super upset by this, as was he, and we had yet another conversation about his mom. They don't treat any of the other significant others like this, and I have no idea what it did to make things like this. She is not a widow, nor a single mom. She's been with my boyfriend's dad forever. I don't believe it has anything to do with a lack of emotional validation. My boyfriend is good at setting boundaries, but she just continues to cross them. How do I go about this? Man. Sounds like his mom wants to f*** him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> not Man. Perfect by Ed Sheeran. Is that hey. the one with Beyonce in it? Yeah, he did a version with her. Yeah. What we're not gonna do is talk bad about my good dude Ed Sheeran. No, I know. I will stand for no slander. I'm just slander. saying not his mom wanting to dance with him to Perfect. <laughs> yeah, like such a romantic <laughs> song. Are you kidding me i think okay if you really really love this dude and you want to marry him yeah you got you got to have the conversation with him yeah. like yeah. you yourself and he really? needs to be there and you need to have the conversation i would make him oh, do it he's already some... done it he's, oh, he's, okay, he's, okay. he said he set boundaries and she continues to cross them yeah then at it needs that to be something point, the three at that do. point family meeting yeah. i'm calling it what the fuck is up with you bitch when she has a big day girl we need to have a yeah meeting. <laughs> when you have when she has a big day you're gonna announce you're pregnant even yeah. if you're not yeah. every time she has a big day i was i'm sorry yeah every time she has a big day announce you're pregnant you yeah. just start out like playing her at the, <laughs> the game. Am I the asshole for accidentally upstaging the bride and groom at their wedding? Last weekend, my girlfriend and I went to a friend's wedding. My girlfriend had recently broken her foot, so she was in a boot and crutches for the wedding, which really bummed her out because she loves to dance and would be sitting the whole night. When the newlyweds opened the dance floor to everyone, my girlfriend was noticeably sad, and of course, I stayed with her. About 30 minutes in, one of our favorite songs started playing from when we were young. Seeing how bummed she was, I decided to pick her up and dance with her by carrying her, 
We stayed next to our table, which was in the back. The dance lasted only about 60 seconds as I got tired and put her down. The next day, our phones were getting tons of messages from the bride saying we were terrible friends for stealing her spotlight with my stunt. We had no idea what she was talking about until we texted social media and there were photos and videos of me carrying my girlfriend and dancing to the song. According to the bride, it was all her family could talk about the next day. I didn't realize how much attention it had drawn in that short amount of time. So, am I the asshole? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Part two, am I the asshole for not allowing my husband to attend his baby mama's gender reveal, baby shower, and baby's birth? I didn't ask for any of this, nor did I deserve it. I financially let him provide what he could because that's his child, but attending and taking pictures with his baby mama was a no. Plus, gender reveals and baby showers are for the mother, not for the baby, so why would he need to go? Fast forward a few months later, we both go into labor on the same day. It was a surprise to us all because she wasn't supposed to go into labor for another month. Turns out the baby was premature. My baby was born first, her baby was born two hours later. I understand my husband has another child and that he's innocent in all of this. I'm not a hateful or spiteful towards his child. I am not an evil person. However, I faced major complications during childbirth and passed out 10 minutes after delivery. Not to mention, I have separation anxiety and was having a mental episode. I told him he was under no circumstances to leave me alone, even if the doctors were in the room. He went to see about his other child a day later. I would have let my husband go see his child's birth, but after delivery, I was extremely sick, overwhelmed, and just didn't want to be surrounded by random doctors and nurses all alone. And he was the only person I had at the hospital during birth. I know this all sounds so shitty on all of our behalf, but I was just so stressed, and now I feel like such a horrible person for it. So, am I the asshole for not allowing my husband to attend his baby mama's baby's birth? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm going to end up on a Ohio State bar stool and maybe the rest of the internet. I apologize for what you are about to read and see when it comes out. I'm so sorry, but I have to get this off my chest and try and explain myself before I become known as the Ohio State tree. So this morning around 6 30, I came back to campus. I live off high street, but don't have class on Mondays and spent the long weekend home deciding to wake up early and commute back today. I didn't want to fall back asleep because I have an 8 a.m. So I was hanging out on the oval, sitting on one of the trees to the right of the Thompson statue. Its branches are a little lower and I was using it kind of as a bench to sit on at first, then just sat down next to the tree on my backpack. There was a hole in it and I kind of started poking my fingers in it. Some water squirted out. And I don't know what got into me, but I started really going at it. <laughs> With his fingers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think he was finger f***ing a tray. It squirted again, and I might have moaned a little bit. <laughs> and went to l it. And all of a sudden I heard a little scream and I turned around and there were three girls staring at me with their phones out recording. It's the three of us. <laughs> I wish I saw this in person. And I was there on my knees hugging the tree with my tongue in the tree hole. I swear I looked around and there was nobody there before I started. I don't know where the girls came from. I want to apologize and please if you have the video do not post it anywhere. I'm literally begging you. I'm considering going to Ohio State Student Legal to negate the fallout damage if the video does come out because I'm so scared. I will literally pay you to not post it. If you have the video, DM and we can work something out so my life isn't ruined. I like how he <laughs> prefaces it with like a whole story. I was at my mom's house for the whole weekend. Yeah. I went to church. <laughs> I, I, went to, I went to the soup kitchen, yes. you know, Took donated. I gave some blood. I donated plasma. Overall, I'm a really good person. Anyways, I was tree and it was turning me on i like how he said i'm not a tree fucker and he absolutely is you're just f***ing in a on-campus tree and you think that you deserve the right to explain you can't yourself? sue anyone for that they should sue you for emotional <laughs> <drama>. damage <laughs> You know, there are like squirrels in a tree hole i'm like what's he doing to our home i'm scared i'm scared you guys <laughs> Am I the asshole for moving to a hotel because my wife's family insisted I sleep on the couch? My wife and I got married last summer and her family lives across the country from us. So I'd actually never visited, but I did meet them a handful of times and we've always gotten along fine. They invited us to come and stay with them for a few days and we took up on the offer. We flew in yesterday and everything went well. Her dad and I watched football and I caught up with her mom and sisters and then we had a nice dinner. But then they let us know they don't want us sharing a bed while in their home and they wanted me to sleep on the couch. I thought they were joking, but they insisted. I had a problem with the implication that I shouldn't be allowed to sleep next to my wife. Am I the asshole for moving to a hotel because my wife's family insisted I sleep on the couch? I also have a bad back and the couch did not look the least bit comfortable. After arguing back and forth, I decided to leave and book a hotel. 
I did tell my wife she did not have to come and she chose to stay and I said I'd come back the next day. The next morning, I called my wife asking when I should come by and she said her parents want me to apologize. I said I'd do it to keep the peace, but they need to acknowledge it wasn't appropriate to insist I can't share a bed with my own wife. She told me that not only will they not apologize for it, now they're insisting I come back and stay on the couch for the rest of the visit. And if I don't agree, I'm not welcome back.